Don't lie, you know why you're here. 20 years ago during high school, you spent the time you should have used to broaden your social circle and sucking up to the kid whose dad might one day grace you with a living wage at his small business on Blizzard's vaguely Christian Bible-themed slot machine instead. You invested your hours and now it's finally paid off. It's here and it's just as you remembered it, rendering at a lower resolution than commonly held standards of the time in a tiny embedded screen. All your old favorite action figures have come springing out of the toy box left at the curb by your stepdad in mint condition during this latest wave of desperate corporate grave digging. I counted Wonder Woman, Talia al Ghul, WW WWE's Undertaker, Kratos, Jasmine from Disney's Aladdin, this guy, and Holy Minister Jesse Jackson. The roster is complete, and so is the story. <laughs> Show don't tell goes the old mantra for wannabe authors who one day hope to make the smallest subsistence from their work in a world where half the population in first world nations are functionally illiterate. From software says tell, show, I have no idea what any of those words mean. I'll show you your own gibbets flapping in the wind and tell you fuck all, then not knowingly when you inevitably make up the story I'm supposed to be regaling you with for me. Jerking around cerebral gamers who spend their time doing my homework is how I eventually ended up with these truckloads of money. Meanwhile Diablo 2 screams, son get off my lawn because I been doing that shit since before the Berlin Wall came down. Everyone knows if you acknowledge his smarty pants' opinions and reaffirm his belief in his own intelligence, you will then happily hand over his worldly earnings and worship at the altar you have erected. On that note, I think we'll all agree the story in Diablo 1 was aces. Wind the clock back to your own puberty and you probably didn't expect Go to Hell to literally encompass the climax of the game. But it's still during 2 that the scope of the world expanded without losing sight of a sweeping sense of mystery. The atmosphere is claustrophobic right down to your teeny tiny circle of light and what little writing you find reveals pieces of a struggle of angels and demons that exist outside your own plane of existence. Humanity was only ever caught in the middle of something your player character never fully comprehends. The PC being one of many pawns operating on the fringes of a celestial battlefield, gaining infrequent glimpses into otherworldly horrors beyond human understanding. Yet it is ultimately the bravery of humankind which decides the eons old battle between good and evil, with I might add an uncertain outcome, and future that man will have to labor to make for themselves. All that was pretty cool right up until Diablo 3 started throwing around the world Nephilim, like Star Wars did with midichlorians, as some sort of genetic mutation manifesting as butterflies zapping superpowers and demanding Satan put on a bikini to bring up the sex appeal. <laughs> is the best version and I'll hear no arguments otherwise because everything is ultimately better with Nintendo. <laughs> Okay, let me elaborate. Being a filthy immigrant, I never knew video games existed back in the old country. There, me and me chums subsisted entirely on pretend adventures of crude paper cutouts of fictional characters approved by the propaganda ministry. After making it to the most technologically advanced country in the world, I swiftly befriended two greasy Italian plumbers who made a living diving into pipes to retrieve dead turtles and clean out fungi. They had an unused SNES and being Canadians graciously gifted it to me on my first Christmas. Today I am a self-made man and the very example of what one can achieve in a functioning capitalist society with proper education and hard work. I know this might be incomprehensible to non-successful people who don't earn Canuck bucks, but a Nintendo Switch is by far the only status symbol worthy of displaying in my tax bracket. Besides, who needs these? The very nature of a Switch establishes you have places to be and the alternative has always meant you've nowhere to go. During my time abroad as a globetrotting leader of nations, I naturally needed to whip something out in first class to impress the stewardesses. Let me tell you, nothing brings you your ramen quicker than a properly configured barbarian build, whereas before she'd have to either take your word for it that one additional point in whirlwind makes all the difference or watch you melt your own balls off with the oversized gaming laptop, you managed to drag on board with the help of the Incredible Hulk. Now you can revel in the perks of playing this decades old classic on a compact technological powerhouse in any socially appropriate setting. <laughs> The gameplay is as it's always been, and I, as a relapsing kleptomaniac, has always appreciated such things. In my youth, I used to own a pocket calculator which repeated the last equation with every press of the equal button. I used to derive great pleasure in soliciting people with the device, already input it with a large number and a program decline in increments of 1. Every time they press the equal key, the number decreased, and I promised them a cash reward when it reaches 0. Little do they know, despite how fast the number looked to be shrinking, it was large enough that given about 2-3 to three presses of the equal key per second, it would take roughly a year for them to earn 20 bucks. The frustrated looks on the faces of school children brought me no end of joy, at least until the authorities were called and I was foiled by the flash. Well, one of the parents of the school children must have worked for Blizzard in the 90s because they discovered reverse engineering my supervillain trap produced the same addictive quality when watching a number go up as well as down. During a sustained grind, so long as the victim was distracted by pretty effects and a leveling system, to make the ignorant plebs think they are actually achieving something, they will happily click away until death withered away at their desk from extreme old age. Also, that reprogramming the minds of miners always went better in a crowd. On that note, as one of the most popular people in human 
human history, my entire circle of associates consists of my wife, daughter, and my daughter's psychic clone that will one day take over your world. Including me, that's as many players as the Switch will allow on Diablo 2, and frankly in our socially distanced age, even that is too much. Viruses can also spread in the digital world, and 8 players is just asking for our current pandemic to be brought online until we collapse the global internet structure, and blast the human race back into the dark ages. Besides, you don't have that many friends. You know it, I know it. The judge who signed off on your stalking victim's restraining order has repeatedly asked you to stop complaining about Switch multiplayer limitations like it actually matters. 